Alrighty guys, welcome back. And now that we have our bot set up through our Discord developer portal, we are ready to start setting up our project in Python. So for this tutorial series, I'm gonna be using PyCharm, but you guys can use any IDE that you want. It's all the same. Now for me, for starting a new project, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit new project, pure Python, and I store my projects. So you guys can see on my desktop in a folder called projects. So I'm gonna open that and I would just name this uh, Discord Bot Tutorials. And what I'm also gonna be doing is sharing this source code on GitHub. So let me just go ahead and create this and I'll show you guys the uh, GitHub link later on whenever I push it up. All right, so whenever it set it up, it just gave me this main.py and all this does is it prints out something in the console, hi PyCharm. So let me just go ahead and wipe out all of this and I'm actually gonna delete this main.py file. And what I'm gonna do is just add a couple quick housekeeping files. The first one being a git ignore, and this is just ignoring all of my IDE files, my you know testing files, virtual environment, so on and so forth. And again, like I said, this is all gonna be pushed up to GitHub if you guys wanna copy it. Another thing that I'm gonna be doing is adding a readme. And for this, I'll just say project setup, and I'll say something like uh, follow. Follow the steps below to set up the project on your environment. And then I'll just say local development, since this was the first thing that we're gonna need. And I'll say create a with Python, wow, cannot type today, 3.7 or higher. I'm using 3.8, but I believe you can use uh, any Python 3. Point whatever. And then what we're gonna be doing, one other housekeeping file for this is just have a requirements file. Right now, the only requirement we're gonna have or dependency is just the Discord uh, Python library. But just in case we add any, I just wanna have everything kept in one file. So install required packages. And the command for that is, it's not an Angular command. We are gonna be running pip3 install requirements.txt. So what this command is gonna do is just install all the requirements in this requirements.txt file. So now let's go ahead and create that file. And just to make sure we are pulling the right version, we can say PyPy Discord, all right, so Discord Pi 1.7.3. So we'll say uh, discord.py 1.7.3. So again, what we can do is just run this command, pip3 install from requirements file. And this is just gonna install discord.py and any of the dependencies that come along with it. Clear, and there you go. So again, if what you wanna do is just pull down the GitHub repo and go from that, then you don't have to kind of uh, type all of that. But either way, this is just uh, typical housekeeping stuff. So now let's get into the fun part. So what I'm going to be doing in these examples is basically trying to create a single Python file per tutorial. So for this first one, I'll just name it 01 on message since we're going to be learning about a specific event called on message. And all right, now the first thing that we're going to do in this file is just import the discord package that we just installed and the pattern that we're gonna be following for these first couple of tutorials is we first need to create something called a client object. Now this client, we can just set it equal to discord.client. And what this client is, is basically a connection to Discord. In other words, we're gonna be using this client object to interact with the Discord WebSocket and the Discord API. So we can just initialize that just like this. And all right, now another thing that I wanna mention real quick before we get our hands dirty is just touching quickly on the concept of events. 
Now in Discord, let me bump this up a little bit so you guys can see. So in Discord, anything that happens, and I say that is a generic term, but I do that on purpose, is that whenever something happens, like someone sends a message, or someone adds a thumbs up, and that's called a reaction, these are just events. Now, in our bot application, what we can do is we can actually listen for certain events. So we can say whenever someone sends a message, we want to inspect that message and respond accordingly. Or whenever someone has a thumbs up or thumbs down, we want our bot to do something because of that. So the first event that we're going to be listening for is just something called an on ready event. Now I'll go ahead and write this to show you guys the structure of these events in the listeners. And then I'll talk about what this on ready event is. So we are going to be listening through something called a decorator. So if you do client.event, we are going to decorate the function that we want to listen for. So it's going to be an async function and it's just called on ready. So again, this is a function that is part of the discord package. And this is just going to be triggered whenever our bot comes online. So this is useful. So whenever your bot is uh, coming online, it's logged in successfully and it's ready to listen to other events. It's pretty much one of the first events that gets called. So what we want to do in this case is we're just going to print out something like um, bot is now online and ready to roll. So right now we have logic that says import the discord package, create a connection so we can actually interact with the discord API. And whenever our bot is coming online, then just print something out in our terminal. Now the last piece of the puzzle that we actually need is to run this client. Now, not Clint, that would be a cool name for a bot, but client. All right. Now, in order to run this, we actually need to pass in one last piece of information, and that is our token authorizing our bot to pretty much run. And we get this from the Discord development portal. So if you go back to your Discord development portal and you go to the bot section right here, you can copy this token. And once you have that copied, go ahead and paste it in here. Now, another thing that I want to mention, of course, is that you don't typically want to run this with just a hard coded token. You ideally want to strip this out to an environment variable, but just to make everything crystal clear for everyone watching this tutorial, I want to show you guys the hard coded token in here. And by the way, by the time I publish this tutorial, I'm going to um, replace this token. So, you know, for those of you trying to uh, run commands off of my bot. This token isn't going to work for you. You do need to have your own token. So I am about to run this. However, I want to show you guys something cool. And that is this. So I'm going to go ahead and pop open discord again and notice again that my bot now is offline. So I'm going to go ahead and just run this and watch what happens whenever I do run this application. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and run. And you can see that my bot did pop from offline to online. And then back in PyCharm, you can see it did print out bot is now online and ready to roll. So again, all we did is we ran our discord bot and then an event got triggered that we were listening for to say, whenever this bot goes online and is ready to roll, then pretty much a uh, hook into this function right here. And the logic that we ran is just to print out bot is now online and ready to roll. And there you go. So now that we understand the basic structure of creating a client object and listening for events, what we can do now is listen for a more interesting or useful event, I would say. So what we are going to do is listen for the on message event. And this event is going to get triggered whenever a message gets sent by any user. So for example, if a user types in, Hey, or yo, or basically any message that they send, we want to be able to listen to that. And maybe we'll have our bot respond with something. So we can say that whenever they say, uh, hello, then the bot says, welcome to the new Boston, something simple like that. So just because I am super lazy, what I'm going to do is just copy this and all right. So we want to register another event listener. However, instead of the on ready event, we want to listen to the on message event. 
Now, another thing that I want to mention is unlike the on ready event, the on message event also passes in the message itself. Now, this message is an object that not only stores the content of the message, like the word hello or yo or whatever the user typed, but it also stores information like the author, um, the channel that it was sent from and some other stuff that we're going to see later on. But the first thing that I actually want to do before we get into any of the fun stuff is we just want to make sure that the bot, since remember, we are going to be listening for user messages and then our bot is going to be responding to them. So we do want to add a check real quick to say whenever we get a message that the bot sends, we don't want to respond to that with the bot or else it's just going to be the bot responding to its own messages and then we're going to get an endless loop. So the check to do that is if message.author, in other words, if the person who sent the message is equal to the client.user, in other words, if the person who sent the message is equal to the bot, then we just want to return to break out of this function so we don't get that endless loop. But now that we have that set, what we can do is first just, you know what, before we even inspect the message from the user, we'll just see how to send a message from the bot. So since this is async function, we are going to await message.channel. And again, remember, this bot can be running on multiple different channels. So right now we only have one text channel, but we can have another one. We want to make sure that the bot is responding in the same channel that the message is coming from. So what we can do is say in message.channel, what we want our bot to do is send a message and we just want to say that that message is just like uh yo we'll just say something unique for now so now let me go ahead and restart this and check it out pop open discord and whenever i type in apples the bot says yo whenever i type in bacon the bot says yo so again all that's happening right here is the bot is listening for any message and as long as it didn't come from the bot itself is just going to send back yo. Okay, simple enough. Now let's add something a little bit more useful. And we can say that if the message dot content and the message dot content is going to be equal to this string of text right here, which in this case, it was apples. In this case, it was bacon. So we can say that whenever users were coming onto our, our uh, server, everyone was saying hello for the very first time. Now, in this case, what we want to do is we can just copy this and paste it up there. So we can say that whenever a user comes on and they uh, type in hello, then we want our bot to say, welcome to the new Boston. All right. So let me go ahead and rerun this and check it out. So whenever a user comes in and says hello, our bot is gonna respond, welcome to the new Boston. Now, just to make sure that this works, if they ever say something like corn, it does nothing. Whenever they say something like dog, it does nothing. Only when the message content is hello, is our bot gonna respond, welcome to the new Boston. So there you go. That is the very basics of, of course, the Discord client the event system where we can use this decorator to register or in other words, listen for specific events that happen. And whenever those events do happen, we can have our bot respond however we want. Now in the next tutorial, we are going to be learning a whole bunch of other fun stuff. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys later.